Hello all, welcome to the microwave and radar engineering subject lecture 3. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain the concept of line impedance and normalized line impedance. You will be able to discuss the relationship between reflection coefficient, VSWR, load and characteristic impedance. You will be able to analyze the effect of transmission line on the normalized line impedance and analyze the behavior of transmission line with the variation in load impedance ZL. So let's first discuss the line impedance. We have already derived in the previous lecture these equations V of x and I of x equal to V1 e to the power minus gamma x plus V2 e to the power gamma of x and I1 e to the power minus gamma x plus I2 e to the power gamma of x named here as 3.1 and 3.2 equations. This V of x and I of x simply denotes here that this voltage is function of x and this current is also function of x. Now, here gamma over here is equal to under root of r plus u mega l into g plus u mega c. This gamma is a secondary constant. Also, we have derived the equation in the lecture 2 named here as 1.1 that is dv by dx equal to minus i of x into r plus u mega l. Now, by multiplying and dividing this equation with under root of g plus u mega c, I can rewrite this equation as this and where the under root of r plus u omega l into g plus z omega c has been observed that has the units of impedance so let us call it as z naught now we can see in this equation that this i is function of x into this r plus j omega into g plus omega c is gamma and this under root of r plus j omega into g plus j omega c has been renamed as z naught over here so i can say from this that my equation of dv by dx has been now reduced to minus gamma z naught i of x. Similarly, we have also obtained an equation v of x equal to v1 of e to the power minus gamma x plus v2 e to the power gamma x named earlier as 3.1. Now by differentiating this equation, we can also get the value of dv by dx. So by differentiating it, we get this value and we can see here that this equation 3.3 and 3.4 has both same left hand sides. So by equating these two equations, I can get this relation. From here, I can get the value of I of x, which is in terms of V1 and V2. So my I of x will come out to be 1 by Z0 into V1 e to the power minus gamma x minus V2 e to the power gamma of x, named here as equation 3.5. Now to obtain the value of the impedance, or simply the line impedance, we can get the value of V of x and I of x and divide them. So our Z of X is nothing but the ratio of voltage and the current at that point or at that length X. Now next consider a length X is L. For example, if we have a transmission line of length L, where source is at this point and load it at this point, let this load be ZL and the length of this transmission line is small l. So if we assume that the length is 0 at the load end, that is L is equal to 0 at the load end, and as we are moving towards the left hand side along this axis, then we are getting the length. But to obtain or to have the movement towards a voltage source in the positive direction, we want to change it value x to minus l because when we move in the left hand side we get the value in the negative direction but to get the value on the positives uh, to get the positive value while moving towards the left hand side we have to change this x with the value minus l such that the l is equal to 0 at the load end and l increases in the positive direction while we are going towards the source so by doing this we can get the we can get the new values on these equations that is V of x and I of x and we have already derived this I of x as in terms of V1 and V2. So now by substituting the value of x equal to minus L in this equation, I can get the value of V of L. Here I have not used here V of minus L because I am writing here the length L and length L cannot be in negative so that's why I have used here V of L but over here wherever the X is there I have substituted that X as minus L so you will get here 
minus of gamma minus of l which is equal to plus gamma l and similarly over here we will get minus gamma of l and similarly in the i of x i have written here l because this is a function of x and this is the function of l this negative sign that is x equal to minus l is substituted in the right hand side of this equation and i have obtained 1 by z naught v1 e to the power gamma l minus v2 e to the power minus gamma l it means over here i can find the value of zl or simply the impedance at any point on the line whose length is l over here is equal to v by v of l divided by i of l which is equal to z naught v1 e to the power gamma l plus v2 e to the power minus gamma l divided by v1 e to the power gamma l minus v2 e to the power minus gamma l so this is nothing but the line impedance it means i can obtain the value of my impedance at any point on the length of the transmission line for example if the length of this transmission line is lambda by 2 then by substituting the value of l as lambda by 2 i can get the value of my line impedance at this point similarly if the total length is l then definitely by substituting the value of l equal to small l i will get the value of my source impedance or which is nothing but the z in similarly by substituting the value of l equal to 0 that is at this point my value of z will be zl and by substituting l equal to 0 i can obtain that value it means this impedance can give me any value on this transmission line by simply substituting the value of the length l now next is the reflection coefficient the reflection coefficient is nothing but a value at any point along the transmission line which is the ratio of the backward moving wave to the forward moving wave in terms of voltage magnitude for example if we have the equation of voltage v of l equal to v1 e to the power gamma of l plus v2 e to the power minus gamma of l we can observe here that this wave or voltage equation is consisting of two values one is this one and second is this one if we observe that this is with positive propagation constant where propagation constant gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta it means if gamma is positive the alpha will be positive and e to the power alpha l will be my attenuation factor it means the magnitude will now be that is maximum value of the magnitude is v1 and it will be decremented by the value or by this attenuation constant it means the value will be maximum or the magnitude value will be maximum at the source end and as i am moving towards a load end this value will start decreasing similarly e to the power minus gamma l means this value is minimum at the source and maximum towards the load when i put l equal to 0 that is at the load this value is equal to v2 but I, when i have value l non zero or in the positive direction then this value of v2 will be this value of v2 to the power minus gamma l will be less than v2 it means this is a positive it is a forward going wave and this v2 e to the power minus gamma l is the backward coming wave that is due to the mismatch in the load so this voltage component v1 e to the power gamma l travels towards the load due to the excitation from the source and the voltage component v2 e to the power minus gamma l travels back to the source which is due maybe due to the reflections or some other reason so this reflection coefficient denoted as tau over here is given by this component v2 e to the power minus gamma l divided by v1 e to the power plus gamma of l that is the forward going component and this ratio can be written as v2 by v1 e to the power minus 2 gamma l now our target from to obtain reflection coefficient is to obtain minimum reflections or to make this reflection coefficient as small as possible now next is to find the reflection coefficient at the load end now at the load end we have l equal to 0 it means over here when i substitute l equal to 0 i will get v1 here i will get v2 only in the denominator i will have v1 and v2 only and over here i will get a z of 0 or simply i can say that z of 0 is nothing but the impedance at the load end that is equal to zl so i can rewrite this as at l equal to 0 z of 0 is equal to zl which is nothing but equal to v of 0 and i of 0 now if i substitute the value of l equal to 0 in this equation i will get the value of v1 plus v2 divided by v1 minus v2 into z naught and by taking v1 common 
from both the numerator and the denominator i will get z not as it is by taking v1 common over here i will get only 1 plus v2 by v1 and you know that the v2 by v1 e to the power minus 2 gamma l is equal to the reflection coefficient now over here when we substitute l equal to 0 then r reflection coefficient and the load end has been reduced to v2 by v1 so by simply substituting the value of v2 by v1 over here i will get the value as 1 plus 2l and 1 minus 2l so this is the value of my load impedance in terms of my characteristic impedance and the reflection coefficient similarly i can obtain the value of the reflection coefficient in terms of load impedance and the characteristic impedance so by rewriting this equation i can obtain this equation when I look into this equation, I found that in the matched condition where my ZL is equal to Z0, in that case my reflection coefficient is equal to 0. And in the non-matched case, the, this, Z, this tau L will have a maximum value equal to 1. Next is nothing but the matched condition which we obtain in the case of ZL equal to 0. And in that case, there is no reflected power such that uh, we can also say that in this case the load absorbs all the incident power and reflects back nothing. Now next is the line impedance in terms of ZL and Z0. So as we have already obtained this relation ZL equal to Z0 into V1 e to the power gamma L plus V2 e to the power minus gamma L divided by V1 e to the power gamma L minus V2 e to the power minus gamma L. Now by taking here v1 common from both the numerator and the denominator you will get z0 into e to the power gamma l plus v2 by v1 e to the power minus gamma l divided by e to the power gamma l minus v2 by v1 e to the power minus gamma l and we have already obtained that v2 by v1 is nothing but the reflection coefficient at the load that is tau l so by substituting this value i can obtain this relation now also we have obtained that tau l is equal to zn minus z0 upon zn plus z0 substituting the value of tau l over here i can obtain this and rearranging it i can get the value of z of l is equal to z0 into zl e to the power gamma l plus e to the power minus gamma l plus z0 e to the power gamma l minus e to the power minus gamma l in the numerator if you look here this is nothing but some exponential terms which can be rewritten or can be represented in the form of hyperbolic cosine and sine functions as we have discussed in our mathematics so by rearranging these terms i can obtain this value as e to the power gamma l plus e to the power minus gamma l as twice of cos hyperbolic gamma of l and similarly e to the power gamma l minus e to the power minus gamma l as twice of sine hyperbolic gamma l similarly in the denominator the two will be cancelled out and we will be left with only z naught that is this term into zl cos hyperbolic gamma l plus z0 sin hyperbolic gamma l divided by zl sin hyperbolic gamma l plus z0 cos hyperbolic gamma l and then it can be rewritten as by dividing it with the cos hyperbolic gamma l i can obtain z0 into zl plus z0 tangent hyperbolic gamma l divided by z0 plus zl tangent hyperbolic gamma l in the numerator which is nothing but equal to zl because if the length is equal to l then that we are we are moved from load to the source which is the length of the transmission line so in that case the impedance obtained at this point is nothing but the impedance z in so you can write your z in as equal to this and this formula is nothing but your impedance transformation relation now next is the normalized impedance now this normalized impedance is nothing but an impedance at any point on the line which is taken with reference to the characteristic impedance z0 for example, if I take the load impedance or the line impedance ZL, then this line impedance ZL will can be rewritten in the form of normalized impedance or normalized line impedance by simply dividing it with the value Z0. So in terms of this, the impedance transformation relation can be rewritten as what we have to do, we have to simply replace all our impedances with reference or replace our all impedances by Z0 then what we are going to do we will see here that z0 will go over here and will become zl bar and this z0 will be divided by z0 of this 
or by taking Z not common from both, we will get ZL bar cos hyperbolic gamma L plus sine hyperbolic gamma L divided by ZL bar sine hyperbolic gamma L plus cos hyperbolic gamma L and which can be written in the form of tangent hyperbolic gamma L. Now, if we take the case of a lossless transmission line, we know this lossless transmission line is nothing but where alpha is equal to zero and we have gamma everywhere. So we can rewrite this gamma as alpha plus j beta and we can substitute alpha equal to zero. Then we will be left with in place of gamma, we have to simply write j of beta. So by writing j beta in terms of gamma or in place of gamma, we will get our equation as this. We know sine hyperbolic j beta l is equal to j sine beta l and cos hyperbolic j beta l is equal to cos beta l. So we obtain this relation and this can be rewritten in the form of ZL bar plus J tangent beta L divided by 1 plus J ZL bar tangent of beta L. So this is nothing but my normalized line impedance. Now let us discuss the effect of the transmission line on the normalized line impedance. We have already obtained this value of normalized line impedance. And now we are going to different different cases. In the first case, I'm going to increase my transmission line with the value lambda by 4. So in place of L, now I'm going to write L plus lambda by 4. So by writing this, I will obtain this equation as ZL bar L plus lambda by 4 so equal to ZL bar cos of beta L plus lambda by 4 plus J sin beta L plus lambda by 4 and similarly in the denominator. Now we have already obtained a relation that beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda. And by using this relation, can I find the value of beta lambda by 4? Yes, this relation came out to be equal to pi by 2. Because lambda is equal to 2 pi by beta and lambda by 4 can be written as 2 pi by beta into 4 that is nothing but pi by 2 of beta and this beta will be multiplied inside and this beta will be cancelled out and we will be left with only pi by 2. So this lambda by beta lambda by 4 can be replaced by now pi by 2 and I will obtain this relation. Over here we know the formula of cos theta plus pi by 2 and sin theta plus pi by 2. By applying those formulas I can obtain the value of z L plus lambda by 4 bar equal to minus ZL bar sine beta L plus J cos beta L divided by J ZL bar cos beta L minus sine of beta L. Now if I look at this relation and if compare it with the relation of my ZL bar then can I say that this numerator part in the ZL plus lambda by 4 is nothing but the denominator in my ZL bar and similarly denominator in ZL plus lambda by 4 bar is nothing but the numerator in my ZL bar. Yes, it means by increasing the transmission line by the distance of lambda by 4, my line impedance is now inverted. Or, you can, or we can say the normalized line impedance inverts itself after every lambda by 4 distance along the transmission line. Now let us discuss the case 2 where we are going to change our length with the L plus lambda by 2. Again substituting the same in this formula, I will obtain over here. Now it is quite clear to you that why I have used here beta L plus pi by using the same relation of beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda. I will obtain it for the case of lambda by 2. And now we know cos theta plus pi and sin theta plus pi values. By substituting those values, I will obtain ZL bar cos beta L plus J sin beta L divided by J ZL bar sin beta L plus cos beta L. You will obtain minus signs over here that will be cancelled out in both the numerator and denominator. And if I compare this value, it is nothing but exactly the same value of the ZL bar. It means after a distance of lambda by 2 or when we increase our transmission line with the distance of lambda by 2, our line impedance repeats itself. Next is the case where the normalized load impedance for a matched load is unity. Uh, we can easily conclude from here that we are, we are going to find the case of a matched load. It means in the matched case, our load impedance that is ZL must be equal to the characteristic impedance. Then only the matching will be done or we will say that it is a mesh load. And when we have to find the normalized load impedance, I told you normalized means nothing but divided by Z0. So when you are going to divide it with the value of Z0 or simply dividing Z0 by Z0, your answer will come out to be equal to 1 or unity. So all line impedance are with respect to the characteristic impedance that not means in the case of mesh load condition, the value will become out to be 1. Now next is a very important parameter that is voltage standing length ratio VSWR. 
VSWR is nothing but the ratio of the maximum voltage upon the minimum voltage as we have already seen in the case of the wave equation that our V of x is equal to V1 e to the power minus gamma L plus V2 e to the power gamma of L. It means all along the length of the transmission line our value of the voltage is increasing or decreasing or changing its value. So to, we will find the maximum value and the minimum value and we will take the ratio that value will be the voltage standing wave ratio and it will be constant all along the length of the transmission line. So as we know using this formula we can find the value of maximum voltage or the magnitude of the voltage can be taken over here. Magnitude will be equal to magnitude of V1, magnitude of E to the power minus gamma Z plus magnitude of V2 into magnitude of E to the power gamma Z. These magnitudes are equal to 1. So we will obtain the maximum value is equal to the magnitude of V1 plus magnitude of V2. By taking common magnitude of V1, I will get magnitude of V1 into 1 plus magnitude of V2 by V1. And we know that this relation is somewhat similar that we have studied in the case of the reflection coefficient where reflection coefficient relation was tau is equal to v2 by v1 into the power minus 2 gamma l so from here again we can say that if we take the magnitude of this reflection coefficient that is the reflection co uh, magnitude of tau then it it will be equal to magnitude of v2 by v1 so by simply substituting the value of magnitude of reflection coefficient over here i will obtain that v max will be equal to v1 into 1 plus tau Similarly, I can obtain the value of V minimum. V minimum is the V1 magnitude into 1 minus reflection coefficient magnitude. And by taking the, the ratio, I will obtain the relation where V1, V1 will be cancelled out or be left with 1 plus tau upon 1 minus tau. In some of the case in the books, you will find this magnitude of tau can be written as rho also. So this is one and the same thing. And if I want to calculate the value of the magnitude of reflection coefficient in terms of S, then from here I can cross multiply and can get the relation in terms of reflection coefficient equal to S minus 1 upon S plus 1. Now if I look at the range of the magnitude of reflection coefficient, I have already discussed with you that its minimum value can be 0 in the matched case where ZL is equal to Z0. And in the maximum case, its value must be less than equal to 1. Now, if I look into the range of the VSWR by substituting the values of the magnitude of reflection coefficient, I will obtain that the VSWR or the standing wave ratio in terms of voltage will have the minimum value at 1 and the maximum value at infinity. It means if the system is not matched properly or totally unmatched, then in that case the VSWR value will be infinity and in the matched case its value will be equal to 1. Now next is the behavior of transmission line with the variation in the load impedance ZL. We will take the first case. In this case, we are going to make our load impedance equal to zero or simply we are going to short circuit the transmission line. I made this diagram in which this is my transmission line and I am going to terminate my load by short circuiting it and we are going to find the impedance over here. So I have named this impedance at this input terminal as Z short circuited. I'm going to use the relation of my line impedance that is Zn equal to Z0 ZL plus J Z0 tangent beta L divided by Z0 plus J ZL tangent beta L. You can also conclude it using the normalized line impedance but I'm going to use the simple line impedance over here and in the case of line impedance where value of your distance or L is equal to small l then that is nothing but your input impedance so I have rewritten this line impedance in the form of input impedance or Zn. Now by putting the value of ZL equal to 0 as it is short circuited, I will get the value equal to Z0, J Z0 tangent beta L by Z0, where Z0, Z0 will be cancelled out and this input impedance is equal to J Z0 tangent of beta L. Next is the reflection coefficient, which is equal to ZL minus Z0 upon ZL plus Z0. Again, by substituting ZL equal to 0, I will get its value equal to minus 1. And I, as I told you that magnitude of this reflection coefficient in some of the books is denoted by rho. So you can see here that this value, reflection coefficient value is equal to rho into e to the power j theta, where this is the phase. So I can clearly conclude from here that the magnitude of this reflection coefficient is equal to 1. That is rho is equal to 1 
and e raised to the power j theta is equal to minus 1. This thing implies that theta must be equal to 5. Third is the VSWR. By substituting the value of rho equal to 1 over here, I will get the value of the VSWR equal to infinity. And if I look at the waveforms, then I will find here that in the case of the short circuit transmission line, I obtain the minima at the load end. You can see here that this is the formation of the wave inside the transmission line and exactly at the load end or at the point where I'm going to terminate it with the short circuited over there I am going to obtain here the minimum value of the voltage. So we can also conclude from here that in the short circuited transmission lines we obtain the minima at the load end. Yes, now uh, we, from this we can also have an idea of the stubs that will be discussed later in the lectures but I am going to give an idea over here that the portion of the transmission line used for the purpose of impedance matching is called as a stub and we mostly use the short circuited stubs as they are easy to install so what we are do what we do over here that we install this short circuited transmission line in parallel to the transmission line where we want to do the matching so this will be discussed later but for now you must understand that what is a stub it is nothing but a short circuited transmission line now in the second case I am going to discuss my open circuited case where ZL is equal to infinity. Again I am going to use the ZIN formula which is Z0 ZL plus JZ0 tangent beta L by Z0 plus JZL tangent beta L. To find the value at ZL equal to infinity I, will, I am going to divide my numerator in the denominator with the value of Z0. Over here I will get the value 1. Over here I will get ZL by Z0. Similarly over here I will get ZL by Z0. Then I substitute the value of ZL equal to infinity. And and on this when I substitute ZL equal to infinity, this term will become equal to 0. This will also become equal to 0. Then I will get equal to Z0 tangent beta L upon J tangent of beta L. Tangent beta L. No, sorry, uh, it is not. Uh, this term is 0. So I will get only Z0 by J tangent beta L. This tangent beta L will be taken into the numerator and it will become cot beta L. And this J when it comes to the numerator, it becomes minus J Z0 cot of beta L. Similarly, we will find the reflection coefficient. In this case, when I substitute ZL equal to infinity by first dividing the numerator the denominator with the ZL and then substituting the value of ZL, then I obtain the reflection coefficient is equal to 1. And uh, we can conclude from here that the magnitude this time is equal to 1 and also e raised to power j theta is also equal to 1. It means the theta value is equal to 0 in this case. Second, third is the VSWR. So again, substituting the magnitude of reflection coefficient equal to 1 in this, I obtain the value equal to infinity. Now, if I look at the waveforms over here, then I will obtain the maxima at the point of my load impedance or we can conclude from here that in the case of open circuited transmission line we obtain maxima at the load end. Now as we have obtained the value of Z open circuited, this Z open circuit is nothing but the input impedance at the or input impedance when my ZL is equal to infinity and this Z short circuited is nothing but the input impedance in the case of short circuited as in my previous slide. So from if I know these two values, then I also obtain the value of Z0 by this relation. So that relation is Z0 square is equal to Z short circuited into Z open circuit. We find many numericals on this formula also, especially in the gate examination. The next one is the case third where I'm going to take the matched case where ZL is equal to Z0 and I substitute it in the line impedance or the input impedance case then I will obtain it equal to Z0. It means now my Z in is also equal to Z0. Characteristic impedance all along the transmission line is also Z0 and the load is also Z0. It is a perfectly matched case. So now in this case, the reflection coefficient should be zero because there is no back reflections in the transmission line. So you will find here that this value is equal to zero. Rho is equal to zero and theta value is now indeterminate because the magnitude is rho is 0, so anything multiplied with the 0 will be 0. So this theta cannot be determined over here. Third case is the VSWR. 
you can see here by substituting the value of rho equal to 0 we got the value of vswr equal to 1 which is the matched case and <coughs> if i see here in the transmission line the value of the magnitudes then we can conclude from here that in this case our maxima and minima are all same we can find this maxima at the voltage which is nothing but the voltage of the minima so there is no we <coughs> minimum voltage and the maximum voltage at the load end it is all remains the same along the transmission line now in the case fourth i want you to do it by yourself where i'm going to take the load impedance zl equal to an imaginary or you can say a uh, capacitive and the trans sorry, inductive value j of x so uh, do it by yourself and conclude that what you got in the values of z in refraction coefficient and vswr that is an exercise for you. Now, at the end of this lecture, we are able to explain the concept of line impedance and normalized line impedance. We have also discussed the relationship between reflection coefficient, VSWR, load and the characteristic impedance. We have also analyzed the effect of transmission line on the normalized line impedance for lambda by 2 distance, lambda by 4 distance. And we have also analyzed the behavior of transmission line with the variation in the load impedance. As we have discussed for ZL equal to zero short circuit case, ZL equal to infinity open circuit case, and ZL equal to Z0. Thank you.